Good morning. So I'm absolutely blessed to be here with you, and I couldn't help but think about what my life would have been like if I would have been in proximity to people like you. You know, my journey is incredibly different, and I'm going to share a little bit of it with you today, and also just some of the strategies that I've learned that might help you in your life, because I can tell you that what most people don't tell us as we're growing up is that we have to constantly be growing. So a lot of you probably think when I'm done with college, the learning and growing is going to stop, but the most successful people are going to stay lifelong learners and always be open to that new possibility of learning something new. So, you know, my story started in Northern California. I was raised in a Catholic family, and it was one of those where we went to church, but I did not feel God in my life. I was a child that was very significance driven and I was the person, and maybe you were too, that always had to be at the front of the line and I was constantly seeking attention and significance from everyone around me. Now as a child, I didn't know that there was any other way. You know, I was in my head every minute of every hour wondering what everybody else was thinking about me, if my parents were happy, if my teachers were happy, like what and how boys felt about me at that time. And I used that achievement and that striving as fuel to be able to create a pretty successful life for myself. You know, when you look at society and you say, what is success? So many people believe it's having a great thriving career. Well, I checked that box. You know, I was a high six-figure earner by the time I was 25. So I was living in a mansion in Los Lagos, if anyone's familiar with that in Granite Bay. And just by any account, I had a lot of success. You know, financially, I was doing well, because that's really what fueled me in my life was being competitive, being at the top of the sales boards, things like that. And at this time, of course, my parents were very proud of me because that's also success. A lot of you guys probably, whenever you do anything good, probably call your parents and you're like, look at me, look what I did because so many of us do seek that external validation from so many different places. And what no one realized at that point in my life was that I was absolutely miserable. I was miserable inside. Like, I was working 60 hours a week at this point. I was eating at my desk. You know, anyone else was like, wow, you're crushing it. But I was really crushed inside. I had no connectivity with God. There was really, there was really no meaning at that point, and I had a huge wake-up call. So my mom, at the young age of 57, got diagnosed with dementia, and in a minute, the person whose attention that I sought the most had to basically sell her business and, you know, just kind of check out to the rest of her life. All of those dreams that she had for retirement and other things just went away overnight with this diagnosis. And then right after that, my grandmother, who was the one that was really, you know, the more faith-based person in our family and, and really showed me compassion and love and was the one that was nurturing, you know, got diagnosed with cancer and passed away very quickly in just a few short months. And that was a moment where I can honestly tell you, I had to look at my own life and say, I'm on the same path as my mom. I'm not sleeping great at night. My brain would never shut off. I mean, literally, it was just on fire at all times. You know, being in the mortgage industry, I was someone where it was like, what's going on with this deal and this deal and this deal? And for many of you, you might be doing that with school right now, where you're constantly worried about things that are going on. And so I had to start this journey. I had to start figuring out how to get healthy from the inside out. And to be honest, it started with just my physical well-being, and over a period of time, I was able to learn that I was using food to make myself feel better. I didn't have a lot of other vices, so I had to shed that. And then I went into a realm that really just changed the rest of my life, which was kind of what I would call my awakening to the idea that I was not my thoughts. And that's where everything changed. So I entered into the consciousness space, and if you're not familiar with that term, it just means that you are awake, that there is a dialogue and, and basically just a program that's running in your brain that if you don't stop and take your power back, that it will guide you for the rest of your life. 
And the amount of meaning that you have in other things is gonna be minimized by that. And at that point, I thought, okay, I'm on the right path. And I, I really dug into personal growth and development. When I mean I dug in, I went to every event that there was, from Tony Robbins to you know, Deepak Chopra events, other things, but there was still something missing. And I will tell you that God will find you. He will continuously guide you to this place. And most of the time, he's going to use some challenges in your life. And it started with my sister's mental health. You know, my sister currently lives at Napa State Hospital. And if you would have told me that when we were growing up, I would have never believed you. She was a college grad. She was somebody that, you know, was, was successful. But she didn't take care of her own well-being. And she was one of the 20% of women out there that started feeling down and went to a doctor and said, I don't think I feel good. And they put her on medication that ended up devastating her life. So at that moment, God really woke me up. And that's when I will tell you that I fell to my knees and finally realized that I had been living for me the entire first season of my life. And it took something so horrific you know, so horrific for me finally to surrender to this idea that everything that I had been doing was in opposition to what God wanted for me. Every goal that I had ever created before was about me, it was not about him. And when I did surrender, that's when magic started happening. That's where things started to flow in my life with ease, where opportunity just came in and I was able to, you know, just be able to show up and so I switched my life to being driven by significance to being driven by growth and contribution. And that's what I get to do today. So not only am I on the executive team at Lone Pal Paramount Partners Group here locally, but I also get to write and speak and share with people all over the country because I know that this life is challenging when you don't have tools because you think that you're the only one. You know, so many people don't realize that everyone else is overthinking too. And your generation, the way that your brains have been wired are different than mine. You know, I, was, I had an answering machine with a rotary dial phone when I was growing up. You guys have had a lot more technology than we have. And the downside of that is that your brains have gotten used to that pace. So you constantly want that pace. And so you're going to have to stop. If you want to be different and live differently than most people, which is they go out there and they work really hard with the idea that they're gonna retire one day in sacrifice and everything is hard, like you, you just keep doing what everyone else is doing. But if you wanna be one of the most powerful creators of your own reality, while God walks beside you and is constantly just laying this path with ease for you, then you have to have strategies to be able to deal with the way that our brains work. So that's really what I'm gonna share with you today are some of the tools that I've really found on my journey to be able to do that. And today, you know, I'm a mom of two teenagers and I will tell you, and most of you are at the very beginning of your lives, is that when you have kids, Everything that you thought you knew about life goes out the window. And so please call your parents after today and just say thank you because we didn't get any training on being able to raise people. They have been my greatest teachers imaginable. And if I look at you know, the perfectionism or people pleasing that I had to overcome and other things until I had kids that told me pretty much every day that I knew nothing, I wasn't able to do that. So it will be a journey and the more conscious that you become today and more surrendered you can become today Day, the easier that's going to be. So the tools that I found have really guided me to be able to live an extraordinary life. And I will tell you, I feel blessed every moment and it does not matter the challenges that I have. You know, my family continues to have challenges every day with my sister's children. And it's just, I get to show up and I get to help them. It's a big difference from having to help other people. And so you've got to feel in this moment as if you live a blessed and extraordinary life. And the way that you're gonna do that is you have to start with a vision for how you want to live. Now a vision is different than goals. A vision is about how you wanna feel. You have to document these things. 
Do you want to feel fulfilled? Do you want to feel like you're contributing, that there's meaning, that there's other things in your life? How do you want to feel in a relationship? Because Western society tells us it's all about doing. And real happiness and that ability to be in stillness with God is about being. And so that's what vision is about. It's about being. And I'll tell you that you want to know what your priorities are before you do this. It's probably simple today. You, you, you're at a Christian college, so God is all around you. You're required to do certain things, but there's going to be a moment where you go out into the world, and every weekend you're going to have a choice. Every day you're going to have a choice where God's going to fit. So you've got to prioritize where this is going to be. And for me, it's 365 days a year. I have to wake up and put God first. I have a morning ritual because when I get to work and we've got 500 employees that want something for you, from you and everyone else is going to want something for you, if you don't create your priorities, basically life will assign them to you. So you wanna be powerful in that. You also have to have goals where you write them down. You look at them every day. These are the things that I need to do to feel the way that I want to in my life. Everyone probably knows somebody or have heard about somebody that's had a midlife crisis. The reason why people get there, and you probably can't imagine it now, is they take a job that they really don't feel good about and then they get stuck in a career because now they've bought the house and the cars and everything else and they have to. You can prevent that in your life by being clear before you leave college. Like, this is how I wanna feel in my life. You guys can work anywhere now. There are more people that travel the world and have created careers around it. I mean, the amount of experiences that you could create for yourself are endless. So you just want to be in control of that. The next aspect is you have to have the right mindset. Now, mindset people don't realize is a choice. The mindset that you may have come here with today was pretty much given to you by your parents and society where you just heard the same things over and over, and so you see the world a certain way. And I would challenge you to believe that you can create the mindset that's needed to be able to achieve your vision and your goals. So you have to have the right mindset. And so many of us are not having good conversations with ourselves. It might seem like the external world is dangerous out there, it's our internal world that's even more dangerous. So you've got to create this mindset that's going to be able to support you. The next aspect is action. You have to take action. And this is where we've got to commit to discipline. So motivation is doing what needs to be done when you feel like it. Discipline is doing what needs to be done when you don't feel like it. So I'll tell you, I don't feel like eating kale. Does anyone feel like eating kale? You should eat kale. It is really good for you. Like there are so many things. I should get up early. I don't feel like it. The most successful people in the world will tell you they get up early and they're constantly working on their growth and their mindset. So just do those two simple things and you're gonna put yourself so much farther than everybody else. The last piece is energy. And I want you to think about energy as different. Now, when you're a young child, does anyone remember like waking up at 6 a.m. wanting to watch cartoons? How many of you guys wake up at 6 a.m. now? Few people, awesome, I wanna hire you, I'm, I'm hiring, so we'll talk later. So, you know, if you think about energy, think about yourself as a power plant. You start with nothing. Your job is to create it. If you're laying in your bed doing homework, you will have less energy than if you're sitting upright. There are so many choices that you get to make from what you eat to exercise to water to other things. You've got to create the energy to be able to live an extraordinary life. So eat your kale. Make sure that you really just own this. It's not like so many people are like, I'm just not an early riser. If that's what you believe, that will be true. So you have to create these beliefs today. Say, oh my gosh, I love waking up early. And just say that to yourself for a long time. And over time, you will start to love waking up early. So we're going to go in a little bit deeper to a few of these things because I can tell you it seems so simple. All right, I do goals. I write them down. You're going to be one but in a 5% category of people out there. 
So if you just went and put on your phone after today, I wanna graduate college, I wanna this, I wanna that, just wrote some of these things out, you're gonna be amongst 5% of the population. So you've got a great start there. And you can just create this mindset and take action and other things, but what gets in the way? And it seems so simple. Like why is everyone not living an extraordinary life and living in the top 1% of income earners, which is important, Please don't ever feel like money is bad. God wants you to prosper. We want you to tithe. You can contribute so much more when you do that and not having money can really steal your joy. So it's important that you remember it's okay to prosper, but what stands in the way? There are three blocks that you've really got to remove. And if you think about this today, tell other people about it because sometimes when we're blocked, we don't see it ourselves and we need somebody else to pull us out. So the first thing is just limiting beliefs. You've got a belief system that's in opposition. I'm not pretty enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not dynamic enough, I'm not enough. And that's what we believe most people are suffering from today and that's why our happiness level is so low. Our ability that most people just compare constantly. You know, I didn't grow up with Instagram. I didn't get to see the 35th picture that somebody just edited and compare myself to them. It's a challenge out there to be in that state where you do believe how amazing you are. So you've got to eliminate some of those limiting beliefs. The next aspect is isolation. UCLA just did a study and they found 50% of people were struggling with isolation. So what's isolation? You could be in this room full of people and still feel isolated because you haven't been honest with them about how you're feeling. That's what isolation is. You gotta pull some of these challenges out of the darkness, be able to share them so that you can allow God to come in and help heal this aspect of your life. And the last piece is really not having that wavering belief in God. Faith means knowing it's coming even if it's not here. Faith is absolutely just saturated in your being that everything is always working out okay for you. If you do not believe that there is a force bigger than you and you are the only one that creates your destiny, it will be so much harder. I create every day. I can think about people calling me and they do without me having to do anything. Opportunity flows to me because I know God has asked me to speak and to make a difference in this world. So you've gotta get to that place where you remove that block if there's just a little bit of a question in your mind. So I'm gonna cover just two important strategies that are gonna send you out of here, hopefully for the rest of your life. One of them's gonna resonate, because I know in mine it made a huge difference. So the first thing is, you've got to adopt this mindset. So whether or not you do goals or a vision or whatnot, if you have the right mindset in life, you're gonna be open to every opportunity. And the next strategy is realizing that you have this big voice, this voice from God. When you were a baby, you did not think about not being enough. You did not think about, oh my goodness, you know, my butt looks you know, big in these diapers. That's not what you were thinking. So you've got to get back to this place where you have this big voice, where you know it, and then you know what the little voice sounds like too, so that you can just be an allowance of it, not let it guide you in the wrong directions. You know, this this verse really grabs me to a place where it's do not be overcome with evil, but be over, but overcome evil with good. And that's where we're in this place of power. So many people don't feel powerful in their lives. Like they don't feel like I can create this amazing life. All of you are tomorrow's leaders. You could be the entrepreneur that comes up with the next Google. Like the infinite possibilities for your life are amazing. But if you allow evil to come in and you don't do something about it, you're gonna go down the wrong path. So in terms of mindset, again, there's two types. The first one is a growth mindset, which just says life happens for me. Every challenge that I've ever endured has allowed me to grow, rather than a fixed mindset which says life happens to me. I can't believe they did that to me. I can't believe my teachers this. You are a victim. You will be a person that will blame everyone. Trust me, you could come up with a laundry list of things that your parents could have done different. Let it go. 
say, that was fantastic that my dad, you know, in my situation, objectified women. It's awesome because I've learned now how little physical attributes matter and that it's our soul that's important. I can be a victim or I can be powerful in my mindset. It will help you in success in life because when I'm interviewing people or whatnot, all it takes is one, I left my last job because my manager was this, because of this, because of that. Pass, no thank you. I want the person that says I'm always learning. I will own anything that I've done. I've made mistakes. I've been forgiven. I'm moving forward. So a success mindset starts with choosing to be growth-minded. You also have to be purpose-driven. Now, I'll tell you, this has been a challenge for other people with your generation because you are more purpose-driven. You think about the planet more. You think about the impact of what's going on. If you think bigger than you, when you go out to get a job and you work for a world positive company that's really gonna make a difference in this world, you will feel so much more successful. You've gotta be value driven. You have to know what your values are every single day. When you enter into the workforce, there will be people that ask you, to limit your integrity and to do things that you don't wanna do. And you have to be so powerful to say no. The next one is that everything is always working out okay for me. Write that down in your notes and anytime anything happens, if you get an F on your math test, everything's always working out okay for me. Because you have this new opportunity the next day. And I don't think about the tests that I didn't do well on anymore. I don't. The things that you think about today, you're going to forget tomorrow. So you've got to be in control of what your mindset is going to be. Your priorities are straight. So you know exactly what your top priorities are in your life and you live that way. Think about money. So many people spend so much money on things they don't really need because they don't have their priorities straight. Start saving for a house after you get out of college. Try to pay down that student loan debt so that you don't feel imprisoned by having to work. You get to work. You get to be purpose-driven. And the last aspect is you've got to focus on abundance. And this is where God really has come into my life and made a huge difference. So abundance means there's always enough. There's always enough time, there's enough resources, there's enough love, there's enough energy, there's enough opportunity, there's more than enough. Most people live in scarcity, which means there's not, if you do well, it means I do worse. So we don't share that much. So when you create an abundance mindset, no matter what, you're just free to let things go. And so I'm just gonna go through a few things that I'll tell you really helped create abundance in my life. Be aware of what your thoughts are. You've got to practice gratitude every day. Thank God for the challenges. Thank him for the problems. That's when he wants you to say, you know, I am your shepherd, Lord. Like, I know that you've had this happen for me so that I can let go more, so that I can stop people pleasing, that I can stop worrying about what other people think, rather than experiencing it like it's a bad thing and saying, God, where are you? How did you let this happen to me? Like use your power to be able to accept and appreciate these things. You've gotta believe in unlimited possibilities. I'm from a small town. I never thought I'd be able to do what I did, be able to have kids, write books, speak all over. I have created the life that I choose and you can too. The next one is cultivate and share your purpose more. Use your voice for good. Tell other people about what God has done in your life. You know, I speak in the secular world a lot too, and people will come out to me afterwards and say, how did you? And I'm like, it's all him. He speaks through me. I'm gifted, I'm blessed to get to do his work. You gotta choose your language wisely. This is one of the most important things that you're gonna hear today. Everything that you say creates how you feel. If you walk around and you're like, I hate school, I'm busy, I'm this, I'm that, your brain is listening. You won't be very happy. But if you're like, I'm extraordinary, I'm fantastic, oh my gosh, it's full of opportunity right now. Math is really challenging. Like, you will feel much different. So you've got to really watch and reframe the words that you say. You've got to continue growing and think like a beginner. When you leave here, never stop learning. You've got to focus on what's satisfactory. We are so programmed to focus on what's not. 
you know, I talk about traffic a lot with people and I'm like, the way that traffic works, believe it's amazing. Choose to listen to podcasts and make yourself smarter in traffic. It will change your life. You will feel much better. But just think about traffic. We focus on when somebody cuts us off, when there's stopped anything. We're not focused on, oh my gosh, she totally just merged perfectly. Did you see that? She used her blinker. That was amazing. Oh, wow. But we're programmed to only see things that aren't good. You have to reprogram to see everything that's amazing that God has created for us, or we're going to miss all the fun here. And you've got to create new affirmations. So create some I am statements. Look at them every day. I also ask God questions. How can I feel more worthy? How can I feel more loved? How can I create even more success than what you've given to me? And he gives and gives and gives when we're in that state of surrender. So the next aspect I'm gonna tell you is to find your big voice. I always say just document all of the most powerful things that you know God says to you in the Bible that you have heard him say over and over, that you feel that are amazing about yourself, and make a list and look at them all the time. Make a list of all the things that are in opposition to that. I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty, you know, my butt looks big in these jeans. I don't care what it is that you guys say to yourself, make a list. Now here's where I'm gonna disagree with a lot of people that are speaking out there in the Christian world. They will say, that is the enemy. I think the enemy is sitting in a beach chair having a margarita because you are going to beat yourself up. He's going to let you sit there and beat yourself up. He's like, wow, I don't even have to do anything. I don't have to do anything because they're just going to beat themselves up. If they have a bad thought, they beat themselves up. If they don't do the right thing, they beat themselves up. I don't even have to do anything. So you've got to get to this place where you know that your little voice will no longer guide you in your life. And it is just sorting and qualifying thoughts. See them as separate than you are. Your thoughts are like your roommate that's annoying, right? Your thoughts are like sitting right there and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna eat so healthy this week. And then over here, it's like, do you wanna go get a large pepperoni pizza and a pitcher of beer? Like, come on, oh, no big deal. You could just get back to it tomorrow. It's no problem, right? That's how your thoughts work. But when you see them as separate than who you are in this powerful and big voice, they're less likely to control where you're gonna go. So using strategy with your thinking, just knowing and being able to document it, write all of these thoughts down that are in opposition to your vision and to your goals so that you can see them as separate. And you can just say, no, thank you, I'm good, I'm good. So I'm just gonna leave you in conclusion with a few things because this is one of my favorite ones and I will tell you that most people don't live this way. And this is where you have to choose joy in your life. Is when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Look out there in the world. It's not how most people live. They live in a hurry. Busyness rules their life. Trying to get attention from other people rules their life. Comparing Facebook, Instagram rules their life. Choose joy. Choose the path that God's given you so clearly. So I'm just gonna leave you with a couple ways you can get a hold of me. If you wanna check out my blog, you can just go to bigvoicesrise.com. But I wanna pray for you guys today because I truly believe that you are the leaders that are going to help make sure that our planet and our people are secure. And that you go out there and you know that you're the creator of your own destiny because you are co-writing your story with God beside you. But you've got to make sure he knows every day that he knows that he's important and that he's gonna come first. So we're just gonna wrap this up with prayer and say, you know, dear Jesus, please take these amazing souls Help them believe how powerful they are. Show them that the voices that are in their head have come from someone other than you, that they are so powerful that they can take a new path, that they can write a new story, that they can go out into the world and live filled lives with joy and contribution and kindness and peace. That any of the struggles that they're having today or worries that they're not enough, 
that it's too hard, that it's never going to happen, that their parents aren't going to be happy, or any of these other things that are not from you will absolutely diminish over time. Show them how powerful you are, Lord, and guide them to the most successful and joyful lives imaginable. And thank you for being here with us today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for having me.